Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another lecture given by the Douglasville class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and his eternal purpose operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We owe classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Douglasville branch was established in 2014. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to school official. The secretary is Dr. Iris Jones. In this school, we use the true, correct, original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that the creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation or your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither is there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of our Heavenly Father and His Son's name. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on our charts as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or, dis particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of the charts to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being. That is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, the self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court that goes around about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the threefold structure and function of the tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law and so-called law of nature and the powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. 
7. To discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. 8. To earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons of children of Yahweh. 9. To make known Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10. To inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword was peace, is peace, and our slow, slogan is to speak the truth. At this time, we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Benjamin Williams, and then we will have our scripture lesson read, John, the second chapter, by Dr. Carol Dye. May we have our prayer. Good afternoon to everyone. Let us all bow our hearts and minds and thank Yahweh for assembling us around the, throne, uh, the mountain. And we just ask you, Yahweh, that you teach us more about your purpose, pattern, and plan and form these attributes more and more in us so we can become conscious of this oneness. And we just ask that you speak through the speakers today. And we thank you for what you have done for us and for sending your son to do what he had to do for us and for you. And we worship you in spirit and in truth. And we just ask that you keep us from the devil, the devil and his lies and deceitfulness and, and the world, worldly things. And, and we keep our hearts and mind on you. And with these blessings and more, and thanks to you, Yahweh, let the assembly say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good afternoon. Our scripture reading will be John, the second chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trina, the Scripture Research Association. John, the second chapter. Starts on page 122. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Yahshua was there. And both Yahshua and his disciples were called to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Yahshua saith unto him, they have no wine. Yahshua saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Yahshua saith unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he is saith unto them, draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Yahshua in Canaan of Galilee, and manifested forth his power. And his disciples believed on him. After this, he went down to Capernaum 
he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples. And they continued there not many days. And when the Passover was at hand, Yahshua went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables. And he said unto them, that so doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal for thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou dost these things? Yahshua answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. And wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remember that he had said this unto them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Yahshua had said. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Yahshua did not trust himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of the nature of man, for he knew what was in man's nature. I just read to you, John, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We want to thank everybody that has joined us on YouTube. We also want to thank everybody that has joined us in the Zoom session. The scripture reader for today will be Dr. Carol Dye. Uh, we'll have a three-speaker format. And for our first speaker, it's an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Benjamin Williams. Good evening, everyone. I'm afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm happy, and I just want to start off giving Yahweh all um, honor, praise, and glory. And uh, uh, I want to make a. I just want to make a statement. It was something that I said the last time I was on the floor. And the Holy Spirit had to correct me. Like I said last time on the floor, you didn't have to go back to Moses, but uh, he showed me that, you know, you do have to go back to Moses. So I just want to put that out there and I had to be chastised for that. So, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just thankful for that. And, and you know, when you start at Moses, you know, because he was the first person to have this divine vision and revelation. Not only that, he was given the name Yahweh at the burning bush. So, you know, when you start at Moses, you no know, Moses, you know, went went through a death, burial, resurrection at birth, but when he was born with the death, you know, when Pharaoh sent the uh, death decree out on the male babies to and under. So, you know, that, you know, he went through a death, burial, resurrection. You know, and Yahweh, you know, put in Pharaoh's daughter's heart to, you know, have compassion on this child. So he was raised up for some 40 years and in Pharaoh's daughter's household. And he goes out and he see an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew. And, you know, so he basically kills the Egyptian. That's a death. 
And he buried him in the sand, and the next day he saw two Hebrew brethren striving among each other, and and you know, and and he and one of them said, "Who made the prince over?" Uh, I can't remember exactly what he said, but if you gonna kill me, like I, I like if you gonna do I was like uh, he said something, and that the Hebrew brother said, like you did the Egyptian. So the, Moses knew this was known that he killed the man in Egypt. So so you see the death with with the Egyptian the burial with him in the sand, and he flees out into the wilderness, and. 40 years later, you know, you got that principle of 40, that's blood, water, spirit, 40. And Yahweh introduced himself to him at the burning bush and gave him a name. And Yahweh told him to come back down to Egypt, you know, to give the name to Israel about, about, about who he is. And also to Pharaoh the Egyptians, but Moses made an excuse you know, was making excuses like, well, I can't, I'm not a good speaker. You know, get the man back, you know, get somebody else to do that. So hey, Yahweh was angry with him. And he said, brother, your brother Aaron, he's a good speaker. And when you, you know, and he's, you know, when you go down, you go meet him. And y'all, you know, and he basically, y'all will come, you know, he'll be glad to see you. But I'm just chopping it up. And, you know, Yahweh also showed him what the, uh, with, with the signs, with the rod, you know, you turn the rod on, to take the rod, throw it down. And he did it with air, ash, or air. I will be where I will to be. He turned that rod into a serpent. And Moses flee. And he told him to come back and pick it up by the tail. Now, you know you just don't pick a regular snake up by the tail because it could easily bite you. You see what I'm saying? But since Yahweh is showing his power, you know, to be what he will to be, you know, it's just, you know, he can he could do that. You see what I'm saying? And he told him to put his hand in his bosom and it turned into uh, an incurable disease, uh, like leprous. And and he said, put it back into your bosom and it turned back to his flesh. And you know, so he gave Moses these signs. So when he goes down into Egypt and he tells, you know, Israel about the name Yahweh. And you know. And how you know the Abraham of Isaac, uh, J, uh, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he comes to deliver. He comes to deliver y'all, and he had to confront the Pharaoh and tell him to let him go. Now, pause. If you read like uh, you can uh, like all these chapters in Exodus that when you read about it and stuff, you know, it seemed like you know like Moses kind of was frustrated, like you know, like. I thought, you know, this is gonna happen and that, that and that, but you know, Yahweh do things at his uh, at his time. So when it was time to plague Egypt, he plagued Egypt, and fair, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart. So when he hardened Pharaoh's heart, you know, he basically um, the first three plagues was on the Egyptians and the, and the Israelites, and the last seven plagues was, you know, you know the that you know. Pharaoh basically didn't know Yahweh, and neither he will let the people of Israel go. He didn't want to accept the name Yahweh, and but you know, after these plagues was poured out on Pharaoh, you see what I'm saying. And our last plague of of the death of the firstborn, you know, Yahweh killed Pharaoh's son. You know, so Pharaoh was like, okay, just go. Take the children of Israel and just go. So the children of Israel, when they ate the lamb, put the blood on the door, and they was ready to go. And they went to the Red Sea and followed that trial. And Joshua was with them. Um, that's Yahweh. And, you know, he hardly failed heart one more time. So Pharaoh got his chariots, his Egypt, his uh, man, and the horses. And they follow out the children of Israel. So basically, you know, the Israel sees that and they were fearful. And, you know, so and and you know, they begin to doubt and all that. And yeah, and um and and it says in the book, it says, Be still, stand still, and see the salvation of Yahweh. 
and he told him Moses to lift the rod up so he could part the Red Sea. So when it was parted, you know, y'all were they had to follow that cloud to the Red Sea. So you got your um, you know, you got your blood with the with the blood on the door, you got your water, you got your spirit, which is the cloud, and all the red sea and the cloud, and you know, and they go into and to the um to the wilderness, uh, wilderness, and the Pharaoh and the Egyptians followed them afterwards, and he closed the sea up on the Egyptians. So he got so they slain the song of victory that Yahweh delivered them. So and, and you know, and you know, and when it was time for um them to hear Yahweh speak, they had to clean up and get around this mountain. And once they got around this mountain, Yahweh introduced himself to the children of Israel. So that's the first congregation or assembly or the first church that's ever written in the history of mankind and even in your Bible. You see what I'm saying? So he was talking to a Pacific group of people. It wasn't no Chinese, it wasn't no Americans, it wasn't no, you know, whatever. You see what I'm saying? He was talking to Israel and Israel. So he just said, I'm get that. Give me Exodus 20th chapter. That's Exodus 20th chapter in the first verse. Exodus 20th chapter. And Yahweh spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy Elohim, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have no other Elohim before me. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, thy Elohim, am a jealous Elohim. Visit oh, of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. All right, now, because Yahweh introduces himself to him, this is like a marriage, and they say, all of Yahweh said we would do. And it was, you know, if you was back there, they see a cloud on this mountain. Fiery cloud, thunder and lightning shaking, and a voice thunder. You see what I'm saying? And you know, they were terrified, you know, and they didn't want to, you know, you know, it just, you know, if if you was back there, like if you was walking past these people, you know, you'll question what is they looking like because this is going on in the confines of their mind. So if you were just a normal person walking past, like with Moses at the burning bush, you would see he was just talking to himself or something. You question that man is crazy, or these, or like the Israel around the mountain, like these people crazy. What is they doing? You see what I'm saying? But Yahweh works through divine vision, and divine revelation. So this is something that's in vision to the people. And since, you know, Yahweh is everything, you know, he can make the mountain shake, you know, he can make the ground shake. It's just, you know, he, he can do all that, you know what I'm saying? So what it is and with Moses, that's the first, and that's, and that's Moses' first trip with the mountain. Now, the second trip. He had to, it was the 70 elders, Aaron, they dive in the bayou. Um, I think it's uh, is it the twenty fourth chapter of Exodus nine yeah. and ten? Exodus twenty four and nine. Mm -hmm. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel, mm -hmm. and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone. Mm -hmm. The body of heaven in his clearness, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, okay. saw Elohim and, and drink. 
Okay, they did so I don't him in there eating drink, so and his hand, we know like 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 David said, he put his hand he, he put his hand upon him to like, make him understand, you know, to build the temple. So as to and the hand is like, you know, synonymous with understanding. So he, you know, but they did eat and drink. Or in other words, if you see a vision or hear a voice, you know, of, of Yahshua, you know, you is eating and drinking. You see what I'm saying? But it's not literal food. Like they took pick because they didn't have no food. This is funny. Like, you know, they told, you know, Moses told, um, it says in the book, like, Terry, he, Terry, you here until we come back. You see what I'm saying? The seven, you know, the, he told the 70 elders and, and Aaron, they didn't have to buy you. But, you know, they didn't have no food up there and it's not recorded. So, I mean, they couldn't, you know, they was going to go positive according to the purpose. They didn't have no food up there. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have no physical food. And they just know, like, you know, Moses was in that cloud and he went, it just, he just went in there and far as they concerned, you know, this man, you know, what's up with this? You see what I'm saying? Like Moses went into the cloud and, you know, and they waited and they should have tarried. You see what I'm saying? But they went back down and said, you know, Moses is gone, you know, and and when not realizing what was taking place in the cloud, that Moses perceived he was in the realm of eternity. His body lay down on the ground, on 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 in, on the mount uh, on the ground, while his soul was uh was was being introduced to Elohim face to face. So he sees his Elohim in this vision. And when you read Dr. Kenley's pamphlet about a divine, about that panoramic vision, he talks about, you know, you know, him, you know, how he was uh Dr. Kenley basically was meditating and and he went into a sleep, a state of sleep and not sleep, but he was also drifted and, you know, into the realm of eternity and he was um he knew he was transported somewhere in eternity. And, you know, he talks about him and Moses was basically was presented, uh, was going to be presented to Yahweh Elohim. And, you know, it's just how Dr. Kennedy's, you know, you know, had this divine vision revelation. You know, they both saw Elohim and, and Yahshua told him, you know, showed him how he created, just like he showed Moses, the same vision, just like when you look on this chart, it's cosmogony, chaosis, first day, second day, all the way down, you know, so Yahshua gave him that, and, you know, and he asked him, he wants Yahshua showed Dr. Kenley that, and I'm going to get back to Moses, too, once the, the, Yahshua showed Dr. Kenley this divine vision revelation. He asked him three times. He said, man, what would you do and what I have shown you? And he said, teach your people your will, Yahshua. You see what I'm saying? So when Moses was in the cloud, he sees Yahweh when he transformed into this tabernacle and tries to transform into everything in the universe, including the man, and he, Yahweh, rested on the Sabbath day. And he also wrote, gave him um, a table of stones that he wrote on and he told them to, you know, as when he came back from the cloud or from the realm of eternity with the tables of stone, he sees Israel worshiping the golden calf. So table, so Moses broke that golden calf, uh, not broke, uh, he broke the tables of stone because he was angry and waxed hot and he didn't understand why they built that golden calf. So, you know, it, it's just stuff that, you know, you know, he talked to his brother Aaron, and you know, Aaron told him, you know, you, it, in other words, you know, it's just, you know, you was gone, and you know, I popped this golden calf, and you know, and you know, Aaron was the one fashioning it. Yahweh's anger was so, so, 
so Kinder, it was so hot against Israel, he wanted to really let his wrath go upon them. So Moses, like, you know, I'm just backing it up to him. And Moses, you know, like, you know, if it be blot me out of the book of life, and Yahweh said, who sinned against me? Him, I should blot out of my book. So, you know, and Yahweh's a jealous Elohim, like he told him in the 20th chapter, don't make no other gods, don't make no other images, or don't, 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 don't create none or worse none from, you know, heaven, you know, earth and beneath the earth. You know, that's cover everything. That's everything. Don't worship no other God but Elohim himself. So, you know, Moses calmed him down. And, you know, like, you know, he just told him, like, you know, just remember what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, you know, things like that. And Moses is playing as an intercessor, and Yahweh knows this because he set Moses up to do that. So once he played this intercessor, intercessor with, with Yahweh, Yahweh, you know, it just stuff, you know, he turned from his, he turned, he turned from that position. So that way it's just, you know, he didn't destroy them all, but he just, you know, he killed 3000 that day. You see what I'm saying with the sword, but you know, but that goes to show you, you know, when Yahweh say that you know, worship him with spirit and truth. He really means that. He wants your whole, whole attention. He wants all of you. You see what I'm saying? He wants you to give him the honor, praise, and glory. Not nothing else. Not your mother, not your father, your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, your job, your money. Your... It don't make a difference what it is. When You know, when you worship Yahweh in spirit and truth, you giving credit to the Father for everything that he's done, and you worship him according to the gospel, that which is Yahweh himself is, and that's what you do. You worship him in spirit and truth. You see what I'm saying? The Messiah said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So if he is the way, he's the way to for you to have life, and the only way you're going to have that life is through truth. So you see what I'm saying? So Moses being the intercessor for Israel, and then you can read all the way down to death, you know, it's just like, you know, he always intercessor. He 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 intercessed that, that thing with Israel, you know what I'm saying? And Yahweh could have been, I mean, you know, it's just, Israel was a hot path. You see what I'm saying? They couldn't get it together. They couldn't, how can I say? They couldn't, uh, they couldn't, they didn't have nothing in them. I just say that, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they, this is something new to them too, you know what I'm saying? This is Yahweh you never met before and you dealing with him and, you know, you dealing with Moses and this is what Yahweh required, you know? So he set up a law with them, 613 statutes, judgments, and ordinances. And that law was to, to show them that they need a savior. And if they broke one law, they were guilty of the whole thing. So. You know, as Yahweh knew all this, and he sees, uh, Yahweh sees everything. You see what I'm saying? He knows everything. He sees everything. You know, it'd be things like it's two mysteries in operation. You know, Yahweh he works in righteousness or through his son, Yahshua Messiah. And the devil, you know, he is the mystery of iniquity. So he's always, you know, just, just because, you know, he drowned the Egyptians, those satanic spirits left those bodies and went to the wilderness and they was vexing the children of Israel and Yahweh knows that Satan always present just like with Israel he be vexing them he vexing us today you see what I'm saying now the choice is either you go call upon Yahshua to get Satan off you or you just go through what you go through you see what I'm saying because the world don't know they being vexed and and, you know, people worship all types of gods, just like back then, you know, you know, Buddhism was like the time when Moses was around and started up around that time and other like Confucianists and all that stuff, too. So, you know, it's kind of funny, like, you know, I like a lot of things that people don't know about, but, you know, they think they like these guys, like these like Buddha, like, you know, he reached the state of a light, man. And, 
you know, and and all these other people that started these religions back then around the time of Mo what 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 Moses around that time with Moses and stuff. So, you know, it's kind of funny, like, you know, people worship all, like Egypt, you know, they had all type of gods, you know what I'm saying? Yahweh plagued Egypt and they gods, you know, and the gods, you know, like the main god that was in Egypt was Pharaoh himself. You see what I'm saying? We may say, yeah, he took flame and vengeance on those gods. He knows, Yahweh know there's no other god but him. You see what I'm saying? But but you also got the God of this world, too. But, you know, that's Satan and the Pope. But, you know, it's just stuff. The main God that he wanted was Pharaoh. That's why Pharaoh got what he got. And he had to destroy that God. You know, the other gods, you know, there's nothing. It's just what? Aphis the bull, you know, the water. He plagued that. You know, it just all type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? You know, it be things, you know, but Yahweh wants that God, which is Pharaoh, because Pharaoh was a God. And, you know, he said, I know not Yahweh. He said, I will let, not let the children of Israel go. So, you know, this these things is something. So Yahweh knew Israel couldn't keep that law. And Moses was always intercessing for him. He's a type of Yahshua the Messiah. When you go back, it's always Joshua and Messiah walking down through the ages and dispensation. You see what I'm saying? And, and you know, Adam was a type of Joshua and the Messiah. Noah and the Ark was a type of Joshua and the Messiah. Abraham was. Isaac was. Jacob was. Joseph was. Moses was. You see what I'm saying? The prophets was. You see what I'm saying? All these people was a type of Joshua and Messiah. Even Aaron, the high priest, was a type of Yahshua the Messiah because he had to, you know, function in the tabernacle. And Yahshua is the only one that functioned in, in our souls. And he's the only mediator between Yahweh and man. So if Yahweh get angry with you and stuff like that, you see what I'm saying? Yahshua right there to calm him down like father don't, you know, I you know, father let him go. You know, that's what intercession is for and and making stuff, you know, it'd be things like where you did something wrong or or you didn't, you know, Yahshua is there is praying on your behalf for, you know, so you can be better with the Father himself. You see what I'm saying? Because nobody goes unto the Father but by me. And that's what Yahshua said. You know what I'm saying? So so when he's in the heart and mind, he's making intercession between Yahweh, pure spirit, Yahweh Elohim, super incorporeal, and Yahweh and you. You see what I'm saying? And he's intercessing this. And you know, and and um and when he prayed, you know, we Paul said we don't know what to pray for as we are, but you know, we might pray for stupid stuff like, you know, get a car, you know, or get a house, you know, have some money, you know, get something to eat, you know, it'd be things like that, like, you know. Yahshua takes care of all that. You see what I'm saying? So it's just intercession, you know, is very important. And Israel didn't have nothing in them, you know. And even with Aaron being the high priest going in there once a year on the day of atonement, you know, he had to make, he had to um, go in there for, the, for himself and for the people and the cleansing of the sanctuary. So when he sprinkled the blood seven times on each time and 21 times you know it's just he saw the flies of the shack and I and you know it's just you know that's Yahweh I want him to get him, you know so that's like unto Yahshua and the Messiah you see what I'm saying when when like true forgiveness is when you basically when Yahshua take it to the father for things that you've done like you know like, if you, if like, you know, just say, like, you didn't know or you did know and you did it anyway <laughs> and you have to repent, you know, it's just like, Yahshua, you know, I know you know, you know, I'm sorry for what I've done, for what I said and things, what I was thinking, what I said, you know, and what I did and stuff. And Yahshua tell you, you've been forgiven. Why? Because it goes up to the Father so, so that, that, that the Father himself forgave you for his son's sake 
You see what I'm saying? That's like, you know, it's the son that's going to keep you in his righteousness. You see what I'm saying? And keep you not falling. It's now to him that's able to keep you from falling. Now to who? Yahshua. That's able to keep you from falling and present you fallen before, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You see what I'm saying? And yeah, and that, I heard Dr. Kennedy say, he said, Yahweh ain't listening to none of us. And what I and what I know about that too, because Yahweh is on he's only listening to his son and the son only. And he only listened to Yahshua. You see what I'm saying? And he is Yahshua, so he's the only one that, you know, he listened to. But you can cry out. You see what I'm saying? You can cry out. You can ask questions. You can ask, like, you know, Yahshua, you know, I need an understanding. You know, I need some spiritual things. You see what I'm saying? And your Heavenly Father will give you these things. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, but he only accepting the Son. You see what I'm saying? And these things that we have a tendency to do, like, just go straight to the most holy place. You see what I'm saying? Even though we're in a holy place, if you've got Yahshua in you or you and Yahshua, we're in a holy place. It takes Yahshua to go into the most holy place. You see what I'm saying? Or take you up there to the Father so you can experience some revelations and peace and some spiritual things and get spiritual knowledge and all type of stuff. You see what I'm saying? And and just like that altar and incense right here, it was four ingredients to make this sweet smelling savior from the stitch that was that um, that was being sacrificed on the altar down in the court round about into and and that's that sweet smelling savior on the altar answers went into the nostrils of Yahweh Elohim. So it's that that altar incense represents Yahshua the Messiah. So when he's praying, he's that's a sweet smelling savior unto the nostrils of Yahweh. So he's only accepting that. Now, you don't want to be like Aaron and uh, 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 Nate having to buy you messing up with stuff like, you know, burning strange incense. You know what I'm saying? Because Yahweh dropped them dead. And, you know, and you don't want to play with stuff like that, like intercessor and stuff. Yahshua knows what he's doing. And, you know, once he makes an assassin, you know, it's it's done. You see what I'm saying? And he and Yahshua is the only one that's saving you from the wrath of Yahweh because, you know, if you don't accept Yahshua, he can't help you to be saved from the wrath of Yahweh. You see what I'm saying? If you, ex look, you got to accept Yahshua. I, everybody do. If you accept Yahshua and the gospel and the law and the prophets and the witnesses, and and believe in the witnesses and then the witnesses make you believe too. That's what makes that's what establishes your faith to be saved from the wrath of Yahweh. Because you know, Yahweh is love, and the world said too, God is love, God is great. Yeah, but you know, he also got a wrath. You see what I'm saying? Now, this is the this is the funny part, you know, it's Yahshua that's saving all of us, if we accept that sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? We could talk about everything else, you know, that, you know, everything else, but the bottom line is to be saved. And and this from the wrath of Yahweh. And Yahshua is the only one that Five can minutes. give. Five minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yahshua is the only one that can give you eternal life. Yahshua is the only one that can save your soul. He's the only one that can give you the Holy Spirit. He's the, he's the only one, and according to the book, this is all in the book. He's the only, you know, like he told the, the uh, people, he said, you won't come to me for you might have life. Well, the problem is people don't want to do that today. They don't want to come to Yahshua so they can have life. You see what I'm saying? You got to come to Yahshua. Yahweh ain't accepting nothing but Yahshua. And at the end of this age, when the universal revelation, Yahweh is looking for a son's spirit in you. And that's it. And the only way he's and and the only way you can get that spirit if you come to Yahshua for life. You see what I'm saying? If you accept the Yahshua, 
you accepted the gospel, you accepted the law and the prophets, and the gospel being preached by the law and the prophets, and you accepted the witnesses and believed in it, and the witness made you believe, and you got faith in Yahshua, then you will hear those words, well, job, my son. You see what I'm saying? And you will hear those words where it says over there in the 25th chapter of Matthew, blessed ye my father, the kingdom prepared for you, inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. That's the thing. Some people, that's the thing. And that's what's, how it was always been. You know, we may just, we just, I mean, yeah, you do give Yahweh all the honor and glory because he's one way or another, he's going to get it from you where if it's in righteousness or damnation, where if it's glorification or damnation, it's better to give it to him now. It's better to confess that, you know, that, you know, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You better, it's better to confess all this stuff now and do the right thing. You see what I'm saying? And, and then, and just, you know, Yahweh, you know, Yahshua knows when we quit, you know, fooling around and we serious about eternal life and stuff. That's when we start working with you. You see what I'm saying? All this other stuff, like, you know, just to, you know, just to be talking and just to be talking in class and all that stuff. This is serious stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because Yahweh can end his age at any time. And all he's looking for is his son. That's it. And, you know, and Yahshua make intercession. And, and once you you know, have that spirit in you because you accepted Yahshua and the gospel and the law and the prophets and you accepted that he died for you and what he did for you. That's the thing that Yahweh's looking at. You see what I'm saying? And if you got him in, you got Yahshua in you, hey, you know, you don't have to worry. You just sit back and enjoy the show. You know what I'm saying? Get a bag of popcorn and just know what's going on in the world today. You just know it's getting closer and closer down to the end. You see what I'm saying? It's just like the days of Noah. Man's heart is evil continuously. And believe me, it is. So just like, you know, Noah entering that ark, Yahweh just waited. And once Yahweh closed the door and made it rain, that was the end of that age. So be in Yahshua, be accepting what you need to accept, you know, and, and just quit fooling around with yourself. Like Dr. Kenley said, be honest with yourself and then with Yahweh and then your fellow man. And just, you know, always stay forgiven, you know, and and just be in Yahshua and come to him for life and to be saved because time is short. And, you know, and we don't know when y'all were getting off the mercy seat. You see this um, Ark of the Covenant? Once you get off there, everybody going to know. And that's the reality. So I hope somebody got something out of it. All praise and honor goes to Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua and Messiah. And like I said, if you accept the Messiah and accept the gospel and the law and the prophets and the witnesses, you know, you fine. But if you're having a hard time, like, well, I don't know if I accept it or not, well, you better go to Yahshua so he can help you accept it. That's the reality. With a few words, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Benjamin Williams. For our next speaker, it's an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Iris Jones. Good afternoon, class. Good. It's very good to be here with you all this afternoon. And I thank Yahshua for that beautiful testimony that he gave us through Dr. Benjamin Williams. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Very edifying. This, like the previous speaker said, this is a school. It's not a church. This is serious what we talk about here. It's life and death. And, and there's no nice nicer way to put that. It's, this is life and death. The things that we talk about here in this school is had, that has been given to us by the means of a divine vision and revelation directly from the creator to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the year 
1931. He had charts painted up, the first one being the pattern or plan of salvation chart. And you see, like the previous speaker told us, he asked that man, what was he going to do with what he had shown him? And the first time, he, he couldn't answer. But Yahshua had to show him what he needed to do with what he had been shown. And when he asked him again, he said, ma'am, what will you do with what I've shown you? And he said, teach your people your will. This is what has been happening since 1933. After this chart was painted up, this chart on the pattern or plan of salvation here, this is what Dr. Kinley went about to do, was teach all of those that Yahweh had chosen what the will of Yahweh is. He showed us a pattern by which everything in the universe is made and operates. You see, he told us about this vision. He said, now, don't take my word for it, but make me prove until you are satisfied that I did indeed have a divine vision and revelation directly from the creator. You see, he told us the name of the heavenly father. You see, I thought God was a name. I thought Lord was a name. I thought Jesus Christ was all right. But you know what? It, all of it is wrong. You see? And I had to be made to understand that that Lord is not a name. God is not a name. Jesus Christ is wrong. You see, you do have a Savior. He did die the death of an outcast dog on a cross. You see, he did it according to a purpose, a pattern, and a plan. And his name is Yahshua. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh. And he chose a title for himself. God wasn't it. You see, the title that he chose for himself is Elohim. Now, the previous speaker was obedient to what thus said Yahweh according to the scriptures and brought us back to Moses. You see, our teacher here in this school is Yahshua the Messiah. He tells us this in John, the 14th chapter. Our teacher has a lesson plan. He uses the same lesson plan. You can go to class every day, three or four times a day. The lesson plan never changes. It never miscarries. It never missteps. It's going to go according to that pattern. You know, one of the last admonishments the previous speaker gave us was, once we have accepted, once Yahshua has put his spirit in us, caused us to see this thing, we can sit back, get us some popcorn, because we know this thing is going out just the way he said it would. We can have some confidence in that. That's the only thing in this life that we can have some confidence in. We look at what's going on around. We see everything changes all the time. I mean, people can't tell you the truth for nothing. It's just not in them. Unless it be Yahshua the Messiah in them, you see, to preach his gospel. But now when 
we are obedient and we do what he says and we go back to Moses, you see, we find out that Moses received that name, you see, and he was given some instruction. He was told, well, first of all, he called Moses by his name. And before, Yahshua help, but before we go back there, you see, our scripture reading today was John, the second chapter. And it begins with, and the third day was the, was a marriage in Canaan. Now, and is a conjunction. So it's joining something. So to get what the actual message is or, or what the subject is, we got to go back to the first chapter. You see, now, Dr. Dye, I'm going to ask you to start reading at John 1 and 45. John, the first chapter in the 45th verse, Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Yahshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Yahshua saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Yahshua answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of Yahweh, thou art the king of Israel. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angel of Yahweh descending and ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. I'm going to stop you right there, Dr. Don. Okay, so now, Philip findeth Nathaniel, and he's telling Nathaniel. And you see, Yahshua tells Nathaniel some things about himself. He's saying, well, is that why you believe me? Because I told you. But you're going to see greater things than this. And you see, now they're going to this marriage. And they're going to see Yahshua turn this water into wine. And they're going to spend three years watching him do all kinds of miracles, healing the sick, raising the dead. I mean, like he said, those angels descending and ascending upon the son of man. And they, those of them who were at Mount Transfiguration, they saw that when Yahshua was baptized by John in the Jordan River, you see, they saw you know, what happened and with John <clears throat> when he bore record that that was the son of Yahweh, you see. So now they go through those three and a half years with him watching those things that he had done. So when we're reading the scriptures it's, it's important for us to go back. Sometimes we do have those things happen where it's divided up a subject matter right right at the conjunction. You know, so, so it's important to get the whole thought in there. 
But now let's go back to Moses so that we can come, I can complete that thought with him giving Moses his name. Let's go to John the third, I'm sorry, Exodus the third chapter and the first verse. Exodus the third chapter, first verse. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place round thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of thy father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. And okay, Elohim Dr. Da, I, can I interrupt you right there and ask you to go to Exodus 3 and 13? Okay, he told Moses that he was the Elohim of his forefathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. So now, like Nathaniel here in, in John, the first chapter, you see, he told Nathaniel something about himself. He's telling Moses something about himself, you see. So go to the third chapter chapter in the 13th verse. Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers have sent me unto you, they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya, Asher, Aya. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be, have sent me unto you. And Elohim said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Thank you, Dr. Dodd. So now you see, Yahweh introduces himself to Moses. He tells him who he is. He tells him that he's the Elohim of his ancestors. Moses asked him for a name. Yahweh gave him a description of himself and he gave him his name. He said that was his memorial to out all generations. He gave Moses uh, some instruction to go back into the land of Egypt and tell the children of Israel and Pharaoh that Yahweh said to let them go so that they could worship him there at that mount. The him that they're worshiping is Yahweh. Okay. And Moses was reluctant about those instructions. And Yahweh had to give him some reassurance, you see. And he told him, certainly, I will be with you. And sure enough, the same one that Moses is seeing in the midst of that burning bush that's there in the land of Midian, you see, on the backside of that mount, is the same one that's down in the land of Egypt, 
with the children of Israel. You see, he told Moses that he had heard their cries by reason of their taskmasters, and he knew their sorrows, you see. So now right here at the bottom of this chart, series number one, it says in, in that little tent there, it says Exodus 12 and one on the top, and then it has Joshua, Moses, and Aaron here in, in this little white tent there. You see, so now he's down there with Moses and the children of Israel when Moses comes back down. And Moses does as he is instructed to do. You see, the founder of this school, Henry Clifford Kinley, he was asked, what was he going to do with what he had been shown? And he said, teach your people your will, Yahshua. Okay, Moses was told what he needed to do. Go tell Pharaoh, tell the children of Israel, Yahweh said they're going to come up and serve him at this mount. Moses saw a vision. He saw something. He was obedient to what he saw. The founder of this school was obedient to what he saw. The previous speaker just told us, you see, once Joshua shows you this thing, you are obedient to what he has shown you. All you can do is preach the gospel of Joshua the Messiah. Yes, things are, are bad and, and quickly getting worse all around you. Things hurt that never used to hurt before. And I'm not just talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually, you know, people saying stuff, whether in class or out of class, it's, it's cutting, you know, and, and Yahshua knows these things. But what we do is we stick to preaching the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. You see, because that's the only thing that stays exactly the same. That's the only thing that can resurrect a dead soul is the preaching of this gospel. You see, now Moses knew it was going to be by a mighty hand that the children of Israel come up out of bondage. He kept telling Pharaoh the same thing. You got to let us all go so we can serve Yahweh at this mount. Pharaoh went into that. He thought he had some negotiating to do. Moses kept telling him the same thing. You got to let us all go so we can worship him at that mount. You see, and through those 10 devastating plagues, Yahweh destroyed the mightiest nation on the face of the earth. And he brought forth all those people up out of the land of Egypt. You see, he brought his son out of the land of Egypt. They had to kill a lamb. He gave them specific instructions on how to come up out of bondage. He gave us through the means of a divine vision and revelation, specific instructions on how to come up out of spiritual bondage down here at the end of this age. You see, with the children of Israel, they had to take out a lamb on April 1st. They had to... This is the first month of the year. You shall take out a lamb on the 10th day of the month. You hold it over. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me say that right. And I'm going to have Dr. Dot read that. Okay, it's Exodus 12 and 1. This is unto you the beginning of months. It is the first month of the year. On the 10th day of this month, you shall take out a lamb. Can you read that, Dr. Dot? Exodus 12 and 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. 
it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it, eat not of it raw, nor sodden it all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. Thank you, Dr. Dot. Okay, so that's their instructions there. See, they're coming up out of bondage. Now, they're going to go a three-day journey to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea. And they're being led by Yahweh in the form of a pillar of a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. We pick up a principle of blood, water, and spirit with the children of Israel coming up out of that physical bondage from the land of Egypt into the wilderness of Sinai. You see, now Yahweh, where they had to stay for a period of 40 years. Now, Yahweh speaks to them. Yahweh marries the children of Israel. He tells them what's expected of them, and they say, all that Yahweh says will we do and be obedient. They was accepting to what Yahweh said. First, they were scared. Because, you know, there was a lot going on there. The mountain was on fire. There, the earth was shaking. There was lightning. There was thunder. And, and they were afraid. So they didn't want Yahweh to talk to them like that anymore. So they told Moses, you go and you talk to Yahweh. And all that he says will we do and be obedient. Yahweh. Yahshua, his minister, tells Moses to come up. He, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they're going to go atop this mount. He is, Yahshua's inviting Moses atop this mount. Now, look, this is these principles we receive by the mean of a divine vision and revelation. You see, Moses had a divine vision and revelation. He was given instructions of what he needed to do. Right now, we're talking about a divine vision shown unto us through the vision Henry Clifford Kinley had in the year 1931 to show us what it was that maybe we read a Bible before we came to class, maybe not. I know I didn't, you see. But when I read this scripture now in Exodus 19, 20th through 25th uh, chapters, now I know what it is that Moses is seeing 
because of a divine vision and revelation. So now Moses is told by Yahshua to go up. And then it tells us that Moses and his minister rose up after Moses was told to go alone. Now, the reason why we know Moses was going alone is because the one who issued the invitation is the one who's taking Moses up into the mount. You see, now, Dr. Williams, just before, talked about the intercessor, you see, and Yahshua being our intercessor. And you see, when we read <clears throat> John 17th chapter, you see, Yahshua in that prayer in the garden is saying that he prayed not for the world, but for those that had been given him out of the world and to all those who would believe on him because of the preaching of those that had been chosen. You see, so now our intercessor, Yahshua, was making intercession for us there. You see, he is our peace. But now Moses goes atop here and he sees his minister, Yahshua, transform into Yahweh Elohim. He sees an intangible tabernacle pattern and he sees how the whole creation comes forth according to the structure and function of a divine tabernacle pattern. So up here on this chart, series number one, can, can we look at the title of that chart, please, Dr. Williams? Thank you so much. It says, Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. Elohim is telling us he is the original pattern of the universe. Everything is made and operates according to him. You know, this is, this is so pretty when he shows it to you. And then you know, I was listening to Dr. Dye's testimony this morning, and little by little, he breaks it down for us, you see, so we can see him do it step by step, principle upon principle. It gets a little more detail every time, but it's still the same. It's Yahweh who took on shape and form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim and then manifest in a physical and fleshly body. And you see, he shows us that in that state of chaosis. He shows us that in the first day of creation. He shows us that in the second day of creation, precept upon precept, line upon line. You see, we have to adhere to the instruction of the teacher. You see, when we read Proverbs, the fourth chapter and the first verse, it says, hear the instruction of a father. Listen, we, we have to be obedient. We Five have minutes. to. Five Thank minutes. you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. We have to hear those instructions. Can we read that, please, Dr. Dye? Yeah, Proverbs 4 and 1. Hear, and read through 6. Hear, ye children, the instruction of the Father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender, 
and only be loved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Thank you, Dr. Dot. See, with, with all that Yahweh, through Yahshua the Messiah, has shown us. You know, some days I wake up and I'm just so thankful. It just brings tears to my eyes. Not tears of sadness, but, but just gratitude. You know, for all that he has shown us down here at the end of this age and given us peace of mind, peace of in our hearts, our souls can rest in this, in this teaching of Yahshua the Messiah. You see, get the wisdom. Is the principal thing, knowing how it works. But with all you're getting, get understanding. Where you, it, it's just an automatic thing to you. You know, you, you, how do I put this? You are this gospel. You are preaching it in everything that you do. You see, we are praising Yahshua all the time. He is our rock. He is our ark of safety. And we are warning those around us every day to please get in the ark. This is going to be destroyed. Get in the ark. Yahshua is the ark of safety. You have food there. You have light there. He is the intercessor. He puts you face to face with his throne. Where you can only say, holy, holy, holy. All praise to you, Yahshua the Messiah. Brethren, continue to study. Stay in class. Let's hold one another up. We don't have long in this. Please don't get mad at one another. We need one another. We make up this spiritual body of Yahshua the Messiah. All praise honor, and glory go to our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Iris Jones. Uh, for your third speaker, I'll be your third speaker. And um, I thoroughly enjoy class today. Both speakers uh, were great. And the gospel has been preached. I have been like truly edified. Um, I want to start by giving all honor and praise to Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua. And I want to um, kind of pick up where the last two speakers left off and, and go into the scripture lesson. Uh, but I want to preface it by doing this. Give me John 539, Dr. Carol Dye. John 539. Mm -hmm. Search the scriptures. You say, now you search the scriptures. This is Yahshua the Messiah telling uh, um, the people at that time, ye search the scripture, the scribes and Pharisees, read. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. For in them you think you have eternal life, read. And they are they which testify of me. 
and there they would testify me. So the scriptures testify to Yahshua the Messiah. And see, he brought that out to them so that maybe they could understand. But of course, this has it's got to come by revelation. You're not going to read it and get it on your own. He actually has to reveal it to you. If they went back into the scriptures, they can see how that all those events and those people and places like Dr. Benjamin Williams said was testifying to him. So then we, it was said, you have to go back to Moses. And that is vitally important because whatever this migratory pattern takes your picture, whatever principle that you're going to look at or going to run throughout the law of prophecy and fulfillment, it's going to start with Moses. Right. So then when you take this and you you and what I mean by that is you can look at it this way. And then I'm going to go ahead and get into my subject. You got the children of Israel. there. Now, Benjamin went through that, how that they were down there in the land of Egypt for some 400 years. And then that uh, uh, 400 year, Joshua, the son of Nun, appeared down there and or they knew him as Oshia, the son of Nun. He appeared down there and then was given instructions to Moses. Moses had already left and was out in the wilderness, had gotten married, had children, everything, and was a shepherd for his father-in-law's sheep. And he was commissioned to go back down there when he saw or when it was revealed to him in that burning bush, um, Yahweh revealed himself to him in that burning bush to send him back down there into Egypt. The children of Israel, now Yahweh devastated that land. You know, the first plague that he did, or the first wonder that he did down there was he turned that water into blood. You see, and then when you read in that scripture lesson, Dr. Iris Jones dealt with this. The first miracle he did in his ministry is he turned <laughs> water to wine, you know. And the devil is a copycat. He wants to he wants to copy that. He wants to be like the most high. So now in these churches down here in, in our time, they're trying to turn the wine into blood. You see what I'm saying? So this thing goes all the way down. These principles go all the way down, you know, so they come out of Egypt by the blood of the lamb. Take the, the blood, strike it on the two side posts, upper door posts from a basin making a four-point configuration, testifying to Yahshua the Messiah on that cross there with four points of blood on him, crown, two hands, feet, four points of blood, just like you got four points here, just like you have four points on that altar of sin sacrifice in the tabernacle, you see? And then they come to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea led by a cloud out into the wilderness, all right? And so... Once they get out into the wilderness, and that's a, that's by your that's by your tabernacle, you got blood, water, spirit. Those are the witnesses that are in the earth. So then, the water would represent that brazen labor, the oil that the high priest was anointed with to officiate in the tabernacle. The high priest was anointed with to officiate in the tabernacle symbolizes spirit. All right, or that cloud there. The cloud symbolizes spirit, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. When they get out there, and it had already been said, that was, uh, he told them to, to uh, when they got out there, to he was going to to clean up. He gave them three days to clean up. And then he was going to speak down into their hearing. Now, Dr. Iris Jones went through this, and th that day was June 6th. Now, we just had June 6th to pass. Our founder told us there's always going to be a reflection in the earth plane. Always. Always. It's going to always be a witness in the earth plane. Dr. Iris Jones told you it was a lot going on with that, that mountain was on fire. It was earthquakes and, you know, to the point where it scared them. Well, on June 6th here, you had fires, the fires up in Canada, the, the smoke fled, uh, uh, came on down into the United States. New York City looked like it was in an apocalypse with all that smoke. Then that same day, North Carolina had a 3.5 earthquake. You see what I'm saying? That same day that uh that that dam broke over in um um Ukraine and flooded out the street that's like uh the outpouring of the holy spirit cuz that happened on June 6. You see so Yahweh is awesome and he's amazing. He's a pattern and these things repeat. The principle is the same, the manifestations change. So you we don't want to get hung up on manifestations, all right? The principle is what you're looking for, is what you're looking to extract out of all of these stories. Just like you have a carrot, the fibers that are holding the beta carotene, it's the beta carotene that you want. 
You see what I'm saying? So we're talking about principles. When the children of Israel were out there, Moses went up into the mountain. I'm going to jump to his second trip. Let me Exodus uh, 24, 9 and 10. Exodus 24, 9. Mm-hmm. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. Read. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Read. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Right. Read. As it were the body of heaven in his clearness. That's right. Now, on this chart here, we have it uh, depicted there where Moses is looking and he sees Elohim. Then Elohim transforms into a tabernacle, then transforms back into himself. So, see, Elohim truly is the temple. You see what I'm saying? Then our founder told us the tabernacle came from the temple, you know, and so he would they were instructed to make or Moses was instructed to make him a sanctuary. Exodus 25, uh, 89. Read. Exodus 25, 8. And let them make me a sanctuary. Let them make me a sanctuary. Read. That I may dwell among them. That I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. So he's going to dwell in that sanctuary that they make, they make him that he's shown up in a Mount Reed. And the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even mm -hmm. so shall you make it. Mm -hmm. 40 at first. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the Mount. Now, he told them uh, before that chapter even ends, Moses, uh, Moses, you make sure they make it after the pattern shown in the amount. And to make sure that you're going to make it after the pattern that they were shown in the amount, I'm going to put my spirit in them to, to, to make sure that that happens. He's not going to leave it up to them. Even though he gave Moses the instructions to do it, he's not going to leave it up to him, leave it up to uh, them. So he put his spirit in the Holy Ab and the Bezaliel to make that happen. Now, once they were finished, making that tabernacle. And there's a marriage here. You see all the Yahweh said, Dr. Iris Jones went through that. All the Yahweh say, well, we do and be obedient. That was on that third day. So in the scripture lesson on the, after the third day, there's a marriage ceremony happening. You see how it's repeating? Manifestation is different. Principle is the same. After they make the tabernacle, then Yahweh to show forth that he is pleased with what they did. Exodus 40, 33. Exodus 40, 33, and he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and, mm -hmm. the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So mm -hmm. Moses finished the work. Mm -hmm. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation mm -hmm. and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. And the glory, so Moses was not able to enter into it. No man was able to enter into it. It wasn't just Moses. No man was able to enter into it because the glory of Yahweh had filled it. So then they, uh, at the end of the 40 years, that second generation goes over into Canaan's land, and they set that, that tabernacle up on Mount Zion. They're in the conquest of Canaan's land for some 40 years. David goes out one day. They have judges first. Then they, they, they desire the king. So they got Saul as the first king. Saul was a wicked king. And then Yahweh gave them David. David is out on his housetop one night and he sees the tabernacle sitting out there on Mount Zion and says, you know, I have this this beautiful house. I and, and, and Yahweh has that that little bitty weather beaten tabernacle out there. Uh, I'm gonna build him a house. I want to build him a house. But David was a man of war, so it wasn't allowed for him to build it. But he was given the instructions to build it. You see, and so get me First Chronicles twenty eight nineteen. First Chronicles twenty eight nineteen. The tabernacle has the set the principle that's in the temple is the same principle that comes from the tabernacle most holy place holy place court roundabout so you have the temple is a uh oracle sanctuary porch most holy place holy place court roundabout you see it was a more glorified edifice than the tabernacle was it had uh they say 10 molten molten seas that that, that that's the um brazen labor 
You see what I'm saying? So it had a court for the Jews, the Gentiles, and, and for the uh, priests. Go ahead and read. This is what Yahweh told David. Read. All this said, David, Yahweh made me understand mm -hmm. in writing by his hand upon me mm -hmm. and all the works of this pattern. Mm -hmm. He made him to understand by his hand upon him all the works of that pattern. Dr. Benjamin Williams told you hand is synonymous with understanding. He didn't he didn't. He laid not his hands on those 70 elders. They didn't understand. And to show forth, they didn't. You see what's out here? When they went back down, they were told to tarry and they didn't. They went back down there and built that golden calf, that golden calf. So he put his hand over shadow David and gave him the instructions for the temple. Now to show forth that he was pleased with the building of the temple. And you know, I say this and I say this, you know, um, if you see it in the law, you're going to see it in the prophets. That's why we go to the law and to the testimony. If he had to put his spirit in uh, Bezaliel and Aholiab and those 70 uh, to, for them to build the tabernacle, then you know he had to do it when they were building the temple. It's, it, it's, it's principle is the same. Yahweh don't change. So he had to do it for them to for them to build it right. And it was a it, and that was a quiet operation. All them stones and stuff had already been hewn out. All they did was just place them to where they needed to be placed. That's that that is another type and shadow or something. But we, I'm, it's somewhere else I'm trying to go. Get uh, give me a uh, first Kings eight and ten. First Kings eight and ten. Mm hmm. It came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place. When the when the priests were come out of the holy place, read that the cloud filled the house of Yahweh. That the cloud filled the house of Yahweh, just like it did back there uh, when they had finished the tabernacle. Read so that the priests could not stand to minister because. Of the cloud. Because Yahweh then took up residency in it. So no, you're not finna be ministering in here, ministering in here while I'm while I'm while I'm dedicating it, in other words. Or while I'm taking up had filled the house of Yahweh. For the glory of Yahweh had filled the house of Yahweh. So that lets you know that he was pleased with, with how uh, the, the building of the temple went and that they did it correctly because he took up he took up residence in it. All right. So now when you think about that, and this will help you to say, nobody was able to minister in there while he was in there. You see what I'm saying? And that is a principle that you're going to run. Go ahead and get me um, the scripture lesson. Yahshua the Messiah is born through the loins of the Virgin Mary. And it has been told that he was going to save his people from their sins. That's Matthew 121. And he goes into his ministry after John's baptism. And this is what you're reading when he comes after John's baptism and after that marriage that you read about in the first part of John, the second chapter, he's going to he's going to go up into Jerusalem to keep the Passover and he's going to go to the temple and he's going to say this. Give me uh, John two and start at about. uh 13. John 2, 13. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. Mm -hmm. Joshua went up to Jerusalem mm -hmm. and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. Mm -hmm. And they, they were in there. They were selling merchandise. You see what I'm saying? They were in there selling merchandise. That sounds like the devil to me. You see what I'm saying? So then if you hold where you are, hold that, because we're going to come back to that. Get Ezekiel 28 and uh, 12. Ezekiel 28 and 12. Mm -hmm. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Mm hmm Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, mm -hmm. thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom, 
Mm -hmm. and perfect in beauty. Mm -hmm. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of Yahweh. Three. Every precious stone was thy covering. The stardust, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the ox, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. Three. The workmanship of thy tablets and thy pipes was prepared in the in the day that thou was created. Now it said take up a limitation against the king of tires, but what he what Ezekiel, Yahweh is showing Ezekiel that it's Satan in the king of tires. That's tough because you know the king of tires wasn't back there in the garden and he wasn't there with the angels. So it's talking about the spirit that was in him. You see, but go ahead. Thou art the anointed chair of that covered. Mm -hmm. And I have set thee so. Right. Read. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Those are the angels. Read. Thou wast perfect in thy way mm -hmm. from the day that thou wast created mm -hmm. till iniquity was found in thee. Read. By the multitude of thy merchandise. By the multitude of thy merchandise. You see what I'm saying? Read. They have filled the midst of thee with violence. They have filled the midst of thee with violence. So then when I said they're in there selling doves and, and turtle doves and these are sheep and oxen. These are things for sacrifice, for the sacrifice of uh, uh, the children of Israel, the sacrifice for sin. And he, they're in there selling it. You see what I'm saying? Now, come on back to John 2.15. 2.15. Read. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, mm -hmm. he drove them all out of the temple mm -hmm. and the sheep and the oxen mm -hmm. and poured out the changer's money and overthrew the tables. And, and he, uh, now, here, hold on. He drove them out of the temple, those that were in there selling the, 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 the merchandise. He drove them out of the temple. Why? Because when the tabernacle was originally set up, Yahshua is the Holy Spirit. That is Yahweh manifested in the flesh. So when the tabernacle was set up and he took up residence, no man could minister in there. When the temple was set up and he took residence, no man could minister in there. So then when he walks in, although he's in a physical body, when he comes into the temple and they're selling, no man can minister in there, especially in their buying and selling. You see that? That principle is real easy. That is, this is in the fulfillment. That, that should let you know that what you're reading in the law and in the testimony is correct because it happened in the fulfillment. He had to fulfill it. You see what I'm saying? Now, it goes even further than that because on the day of Pentecost, he takes up residence in man's heart and mind or in that temple and then nobody else can minister in there. No satanic spirits in there. You see what I'm saying? Those men that were in the temple buying and selling was a type and shadow of the satanic spirit being in the heart and mind of a man or in the body of a man buying and selling. You see what I'm saying? What? Buying and selling different doctrines, buying and selling different thoughts, buying and selling different. That's what they do. And he's going to say that. Remember, it was by, the, um, by his merchandise that you just read in Ezekiel. Watch what Yahshua says about that. Read. And said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Ain't that what he just did? Ain't that what Satan did? That's why I said what they were doing sounds like the devil. They do it in churches now. They're in there selling things. And, and, and keep in mind, you may say, well, I can understand him driving the guys out that was buying this, uh, you know, doing the merchandise. Why did he drive out the sheep, oxen, and the, and, and, the, and the turtle doves and tell them, take this stuff hence? The reason he's doing that is because he's the true sacrifice. He's the reality of the sacrifice. He's the sacrifice. He's going to take on the sins of the world. That's what he manifested to do. He's going to do that. 
So you don't need this stuff. This stuff, even though they were still under the law at that time, it, this stuff is just types and shadows. You see, and then in, in Jeremiah, Yahweh told Jeremiah, "Man, I'm I'm not pleased in burnt offerings and stuff like that. Why?" And then he told you, "That's in Jeremiah." Then you go back to the law, and he told Abraham, "Say Yahweh will." Abraham told Isaac, "Yahweh will provide himself a sacrifice." So then when you come back over here, you can understand why he drove out all of it out of his house. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead and read. Back to um, John, the second chapter. 16th verse. And the 16th verse. Mm -hmm. And said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Read. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. It was written. Where was it written? Hold where you are. That's John 2, 17. Get, I think it's Psalm 69 and 9. Psalm 69 and 9. For the zeal of thine house. Thank you, Yashua, because I ain't read that scripture in about 15 years. <laughs> I, I, I just, that, that's the Holy Spirit. I heard. Thank you, Yashua. Go ahead. That's it. For read. The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Read. And the reproaches of them that reproached thee are fallen upon me. There you go. The, and the reproaches of them that reproached me are falling on me. That's why I just told you he drove out all of that stuff, the men along with the sheep and oxen and all that, because he's going to take that on himself. Now, he's an innocent man. If you see somebody commit a crime, you see somebody murder somebody or you see somebody, and you're just an innocent bystander. And the police come, are you going to jump in and say, you know what, I, I'm going to take this on me. I, yeah, I'm going to take the blame for that. None of us would do that. You see what I'm saying? Especially knowing that we're innocent and we didn't have nothing to do with it. We're not going to inject ourselves into that. But see, Yahshua, he was made to be seen for us that we might be the righteousness in him. You see what I'm saying? So those that reproach me, he said he's going to take on that reproach. Go ahead. Go back to John, second chapter, started uh, the, the uh, 18th verse. John 2, 18. Then answered the Jews and said, and also, before you finish reading that, you see how it says, and his disciples remembered that it was written. They had to go back to the testimony and to the law. <laughs> that's how, and, and when he resurrected, that's how he taught them. And beginning at Moses, he expounded unto them all the things concerning himself, which it all testified to him. But go ahead and read. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, what sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Mm -hmm. Joshua answered and said unto them, "Destroy this temple." Mm -hmm. This it's is a, this is the sign that he's going to give them. Joshua said unto them, "What? Destroy this temple, mm -hmm. and in three days I will raise it up." Now he's telling them, destroy this temple. They looking around. You can, you see how they stood right in his face and misunderstood what he said. He said, destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. They turn around and look at the Herodian temple and say, what? Read. Then said the Jews, 40 and six years was this temple in building. Mm -hmm. And I'll rear it up in three days. And you won't raise it up in three days. And it's been in the building for 46 years. Read. But he spake of the temple of his body. But he spake of the temple of his body. As John is writing this, this is some 30 years later. This is after Pentecost. That's when John understood, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, he was talking about the temple of his body. He said, destroy this temple, not that temple. Our founder said the world don't know the difference between this and that. Take, eat, this is my body. Talking about himself. Destroy this temple. Talking about himself. Not that temple. This temple. You see what I'm saying? Now, they stood right in his face and didn't understand what he said. They didn't understand that this was a temple. 
You see? His body was a temple. So if they don't understand that his body was a temple, how much more are they going to understand that this is a temple? And that what you read in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple? Oh, the Holy Spirit, which ye have a Yahweh, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body and your spirit, which are his. And if they don't understand that this is a temple, how much more are they going to understand that this is a temple? This right here. This right here. Remember I said in the beginning, the tabernacle came forth out of the temple in Moses' vision. You see? Get 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Now, remember, John is saying, but he spake of the temple of his body, you see? And in three days, Yahweh raised it up. He didn't lie. He, he told him the truth. <laughs> Y'all already raised it up. And re, re, well, before you get 1 Corinthians 6 19, go back to John 2 and start it in 22. John 2 22. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture mm -hmm. and the word which Yahshua had said. And that ain't that what we said? It was after he had raised from the dead that they they remembered that he had said this. You see what I'm saying? That he they remembered and understood what he was actually talking about. That's why I say it comes by revelation. You can read and read and read, and it's good. You should read because he's got to have something to bring back to your remembrance. But when you read and read and read, you need for the teacher to point these things out to you. And he's going to do it in a certain order. The steps of a righteous man are ordered. He's going to do it in a certain order. He's going to go and beginning in Moses, he expounded unto them. He's going to go law, prophecy, fulfillment. What you see in the prophecy is drawn out of the law. What you see in the uh, 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 fulfillment is drawn out of the prophecy. We just did that with them not being able to minister in the temple. And then why Yahshua comes in and runs them out. You see what I'm saying? And then to show forth in the reality, spiritual uh, uh, reality, is when he takes up residence in you, those satanic spirits are drawn, they're, they're, they're cast out. That's what this is about. What know ye not that your body, at, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, read. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? That's his residence. That's his body. So people say, my body, my choice. Really? So when you get sick, don't go crying to him if it's your body. Which is in you, which ye have of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And ye are not your own. You are not your own. I'm a, I give my body to who I want to give it to. Really? Is that for, what you think? For ye are bought with a price. You've been bought with a price. So you are not your own. And you never was. Now, you don't have nothing. You don't. Now, yes. I understand people. Hold on. I understand people going to get upset about what I just said. You don't have anything. He just said that. I didn't say it. He said that. Everything that you have was given to you. And this is why we say when we when you when you analyze it on down, even the spirit that you have is Yahweh's spirit. That's why we say you are Yahweh and you are. So that means you are not your own. Go ahead. Read. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit. Did he say anything about a church? Did he say anything about something being outside of you? Did he say glorify him with your hands? It don't say that. He said, glorify him in your body and your spirit, which belong to, read. Which are Yahweh's. Which is his. <laughs> and you better be thankful about that, that is his, because he takes care of his. You want to be your own? Take care of your own self then. Be thankful about that. 
glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are his, not nothing outside of you. It's right there in you. That body was created for him. Now, I'm going to say this, you have a natural body, you have a spiritual body. So then if you can understand, if they, if they, people don't see that uh, here, we'll go here, that this is a body, there's a body within a body. You have a soul. The soul is a body. It's a spiritual body. I know I have an inner man because I got an outer man. The outer man is going to perish. It's going to go back to the dust of the earth. So it is the heart and mind that the Holy Spirit is operating in. Man is made spirit, soul, body. So the Holy Spirit is operating in a man's heart and mind. So it is that inner man that you want to feed with knowledge, intelli intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength is what makes it up. But those attributes had to be, have to be fed. You see what I'm saying? Soul food. You got a natural food is a, only a type and a shadow of soul food. So if you are eating junk food in the, in, the, in the natural all the time, then the physical body can become sick. If you don't have living uh, water, from a natural standpoint, the physical body can become dehydrated. So then if that be the case, if you're eating junk food all the time in the spirit, then that inner man starts to suffer and, 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 and die. If you don't have living water, Yahshua is the living water, then the inner man becomes dehydrated or becomes tormented. You see what I'm saying? We're talking about the true gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of Yahshua, the Messiah, according to the scriptures. Look at it this way as well. I got three minutes. If the Holy Spirit is taking up residency, it's the Holy Spirit that is going to, um, our founder put it like this. He said that is going to immortalize that mortal. He said you have an immortal spirit dwelling in a mortal body. And it'll be that immortal spirit to to uh, immortalize that you're going to get a new body. You see what I'm saying? Once this thing is all over with, that's not subject to the aches and pains that we have now. A lot of us have high blood pressure. A lot of us have diabetes. A lot of us have, you know, high cholesterol. Now that you ain't gonna have to worry about that cancer and all that stuff. You ain't have to worry about that. This new body is not going to be subject to death. It's not going to be subject to the makes and pains. You see what I'm saying? We're going to have a body like his, and we are a part of his body. That's why you don't have nothing. That's why that statement is made there. You really don't have nothing. You'll be at one with the father. You see, that's where you come from. You just go back to where you came from. You come from spirit. You're going to go back to spirit. Now, you can go back glorified, or you can go back uh, damn. One or the other. This, that body that you have was given to you um, for him to dwell in. Make them a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. When he created Adam, he got in Adam. He didn't create him and then put somebody else in there. He got in there. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among. You see what I'm saying? So you're not supposed to have no satanic spirit sitting up in you. You're not. That's the, that's the uh, uh, temple of the Holy Spirit. It's supposed to be the Holy Spirit. Now, if you do have a satanic spirit sitting up in you, then that body is a tomb. It's not a temple. It's a tomb. But when the Holy Spirit is, is dwelling in you, see, it's a temple. Yahweh is awesome. He's awesome. You know, keep coming. There's a lot to learn. Um... Yahweh has been with us and he's revealing now more than ever before. End on um end on uh, Colossians 1 26. Colossians 1 26. Mm -hmm. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his sons. That's the only people that's gonna understand this is his sons. Don't get caught up in the physical. This thing is about the spirit. Read. Whom Yahweh would make known 
what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, mm -hmm. which is Yahshua in you, the mm -hmm. only hope of glory. That's your only hope of glory. And that's what we preach. That's the gospel. You see what I'm saying? A death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah according to the scriptures. And not only in you, Father, make them one as we are one. That's what Yahshua prayed. You see what I'm saying? He wants you to be one with him. And you are, whether you know it or not. We're just trying to make you aware of it. You see what I'm saying? That's all that this is about. Help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. You know, and that's what we endeavor to do. With that, I'd like to say all praise and honor go to Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua. And I'd like to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. That concludes class for today. These classes operate by free will donation. Anybody desiring to make a donation, please see our treasurer, Dr. Todd Renshaw. We hold classes every Sunday from 12 to 2, every Wednesday from 7 to 9, every Friday from um, 6 to 8 is our minister's meeting workshop. May we all bow our hearts and minds for doxology. Doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude and goes as follows. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both for all time, now, and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, brethren.